Hello, my name is Dawn McLean, and as the president of the Albert County Historical Society, I welcome you to the Albert County Museum in Hopewell Cape, Albert County. And you know we are on the traditional territory of the Mi'kmaq First Nations people. As a teacher, I know the tremendous educational value of the Heritage Fair program because it provides so many opportunities for students to create amazing heritage projects as they learn about people and events that are an important part of our history. In fact, the Albert County Museum has hosted the Regional Heritage Fair for numerous years, and the students from Anglophone East have come and had an amazing day here. Well, what better place than at a museum? And I am so pleased to be able to share the amazing story of a young woman who was determined to achieve her goal and become a sea captain, despite having to face challenges, especially gender discrimination, as she tried to cross the barrier into a man's world, where at that time, her position that she desired was only for men. The young woman was the legendary Molly Cool, who was born in February 1916, in the Fundy Coast village of Alma, the daughter of a Dutch sea captain, Paul Kuhl, and his wife, Myrtle Anderson, who was from Alma. You know, Molly was a very energetic, lively child. She did very well in school. Uh, she loved math and geography. And you know, from the age of five, she was uh, used to going to the sea with her dad on his scow. She loved the sea. And of course, when summer vacation came, she could hardly wait so she could help her father on the scow, named Jean Kay, after Molly's older sister. Molly graduated at the age of 16. During the Depression years, you know, times were hard, jobs were scarce. So Molly decided she would work for her father on his scow so that way she could help the family's income. You know, the scow was a working boat. It transported cargo such as lumber and gravel along the shores of Petticodiac and down the Fundy Coast, as far as St. John and even as far as Boston. Seagoing life working on the scow was hard, rugged work, but Molly was learning the necessary skills she needed from her father to be able to navigate the dangerous tidal waters. At the age of 21, Molly enrolled in the navigation school in St. John and received her mate's license. So after serving as mate for two years on the scow, Jean K, she was determined she was going to try for her captain's license. So she enrolled in the Marine Institute in Yarmouth, Nova Scotia. Well, she'd passed her courses, so she submitted an application to then write the captain's exams, but her application was refused. But they didn't know Molly. She wasn't going to give up that easily. So she submitted her application again. Another refusal. This time she was told that the Canadian Shipping Act didn't allow women to write the exams for captain license. Well, Molly persisted. Eventually, the Canadian Shipping Act was amended to include both he and she. This allowed Molly to write the captain's exam, but she still faced discrimination. Her test wasn't the same as the men's. They even brought in a special examiner from Halifax who grilled her for two days on every subject dealing with ship, the ship safety, the navigation. Molly knew she had to answer 100% all the questions, both orally and the written exam. I expect the chief examiner was surprised and probably impressed that Molly Cool was so well qualified. She passed the exams. But remember, she had that great training from her father all those years. That was a significant event because on May 25th, 1939, Molly Cool became the first licensed female Master Mariner or Sea Captain in North America. When she telegrammed home to tell her family, this is all it said. You can call me Captain from now on. Molly Cool became a trailblazer for women in 1939, opening new opportunities. But I want to ask you, is the Molly Cool story still meaningful today? Molly Cool has been an inspiration 
for many women who have successfully entered a career intended only for men. A recent CBC Land and Sea episode entitled Women at Sea shared the story of Molly Cole and showed that her story is still inspiring young women today. Oh yes, and Molly Cole's legacy doesn't end here. In May 2019, the new Canadian icebreaker was christened the CCGS Captain Molly Cool and joined the Canadian fleet. Molly Cool made history again, being the first female to have her name on a Canadian Coast Guard ship. In the fall of 2020, it was a special honor to have Captain Catherine Lacombe, actually the captain of the Captain Molly Cool Icebreaker, visit the Albert County Museum. And Captain Lacombe shared that Molly Cool had been an inspiration and a role model to her in her pursuit of becoming a captain in the Canadian Coast Guard. After hearing a bit of the amazing story of Captain Molly Cool, I'm sure you would like to learn more. I know this is a very excellent book that you would enjoy. It's Molly Cool, Captain of the Atlantic. Thank you for listening to the Molly Cool story. And hopefully this has inspired you to have faith in yourself and shoot for your dreams. I'll be captain from now on in my blood. Fire and ice have made me strong in deep waters. I belong. Call me Captain Cool from now on.